Hey guys, I'm Emily from the Blue Mouse and today I'm going to show you how to make this very easy cup cozy. So this is perfect for beginners or last minute gifts because it's super simple and very quick and easy. Even if you're a beginner, you can do this. All it takes is knowing how to knit, cast on, and bind off. And I'm going to show you how to do all of those in this video. So for this pattern, you're going to need some yarn, a pair of knitting needles, a yarn needle, and some scissors. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using worsted weight yarn and US 8 or 5 millimeter needles, but this works for any yarn weight and pretty much any needle size as well. Just find some yarn that you have lying around or that you want to use and find a good pair of needles to use with it. So if you're using chunkier yarn, use bigger needles and vice versa. I have some leftover Karen Cakes yarn, so I thought I'd put it to good use and make a few cup cozies with it. And using this yarn with these needles, I have a gauge of 18.5 stitches and 30 rows equaling 4 inches. So just find whatever works for you. Find the yarn and some needles and test it out. Figure out what your gauge is and figure out how many stitches you can get in one inch. I can get 18.5 stitches in four inches. So my gauge is four inches wide, but this cup cozy is only three inches wide. So just play around with the yarn that you have and figure out how many stitches it takes to get three inches because that is a typical cup cozy size. That's what works for me and I found that with worsted weight yarn and US 8 or 5 millimeter needles, it takes 14 stitches to get three inches wide. So I'm going to show you how to cast on. If you already know how to do this, you can skip ahead to this time code for the next step. Alright, so for those of you that don't know how to do a cast on, I'm going to show you how to do a long tail cast on. So here I have my yarn and I've got my yarn tail here and you're just going to estimate how much yarn you need. So what I like to do is take a little bit of a length and this will be the tail that I'm going to use. So the tail that I'm going to weave in at the end. I start wrapping it around my needle for as many stitches as I'm going to cast on. So I'm going to cast on 14, so I'm going to wrap it around 14 times. Two. All right, 14 times. I pinch where that yarn ends, pull it off, and this should be where I start. So this is connected to my skein of yarn over here, and this is the tail. So I'm going to put it over my needle, like this, and pinch it with my fingers on my left hand. And then I'm going to put my fingers in this loop here, and pull it apart, and then you twist your thumb. So you're creating almost a loop here with your thumb. And I'm going to take my needle, go under and through that loop. And then with the yarn around my index finger, I'm going to wrap that around the needle. And then you pull that yarn through the loop like this. And then you just release the yarn from your thumb and pull tight and then you just repeat through that loop, yarn over, pull through that loop, release, pull tight, and you don't want to pull too tight, but just so that there's not a whole lot of loose yarn around here. So then you're back to having that loop around your thumb, go under and through like that, yarn over, Pull that loop through, release with your thumb and pull a little bit tight and you're just going to slowly keep doing this until you have as many stitches as you need. So remember you're looking to make three inches. So just make a test swatch and figure out how many stitches makes three inches and then cast on that many stitches. Alright, I have my 14 stitches here. So we're ready to begin. You're just going to turn your work and we're just going to start knitting across this first row. So this is very simple. If you know how to knit, then you're just going to keep knitting back and forth for every row until you have seven inches in length. 
and you want to make sure that your project is stretchy because you want seven inches but you want it to be able to stretch a little bit to fit around a coffee cup because if you make it too loose then it will just slide right off. You want to have to stretch it just a little bit in order to get it on the cup. Alright, so for row one and every row in this pattern we're going to knit. And if you already know how to knit and you want to skip to binding off, you can use this time code here. And if you want to skip to seaming, you can use this time code. So now I'm going to show you how to knit. You're going to want to hold the yarn that is connected to your skein in your hand, the same way that you do with the long tail cast on. So you hold it in your last few fingers. And then I bring my index finger up like this to give it a little bit of tension. So here we have our first loop, and you're going to take your right hand needle and go into the front of that first loop. So you're creating this kind of X with your needles. That's what it looks like from that side. And then you're just going to bring the yarn up with your index finger and wrap it over the needle. And then you're going to pull that yarn over through this loop here. If it helps, you can put your finger on that yarn over to help pull it through. So pull it through. So you've just created this loop here, which means that you can get rid of this one on your left hand needle. And you've done your first knit stitch. And you're just going to repeat that. So take your right hand needle into the front loop. And you're creating that X again, remember. And then you're going to bring your index finger up and yarn over. Pull that yarn over through your loop. And then you can slide that off your left hand needle. So you're basically creating a stitch and sliding one off your left hand needle. So again, into that front loop. Yarn over. Pull that loop through. Then you can slide this off your left hand needle. And you're just going to keep doing that. So into the front loop, yarn over, pull a loop through, slide off, into that loop, yarn over, pull it through, slide off, and you're just going to keep doing that for every stitch until you reach the end of your row into that final last stitch, yarn over and pull through, and you've done your first row. And you're just going to turn your work around, put the yarn in the back, and do it again. So into that front loop, creating that X again, yarn over, pull a loop through, then you can slide this off, into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, slide off, into the loop, yarn over, pull through, slide off, into the loop, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And you're just going to keep doing this for every stitch on every row until you have seven inches. And again, you want your piece to be kind of stretchy like this, so that when you put it on, it fits really well on your cup and isn't too loose. So I'm going to skip ahead to show you how to bind off, but just follow those same instructions for every row until you have seven inches. Okay, so here I have an almost finished cup cozy, and I used a self-striping yarn called Karen Cakes, so I didn't change colors here purposely, it's just how the yarn was striped. So I'm going to show you how to bind off. This is our last row and it's a right side facing row. But for this it doesn't really matter which side it is because it's all garter so it looks pretty much the same. So basically how I bind off is I knit two and then I slide one over the other and off the needle. We're going to knit two normally. So go into that front loop as if to knit, creating that X again, you know yarn over and pull through 
then slide off, then do that again. You've got two stitches here on your needle. You're just going to take your left hand needle into the front loop of that first stitch, like this, and then you're going to pull it over the second loop and off your needle. So now you only have one loop on your right hand needle and you can slide that off your left hand needle. So you have just bound off one stitch and you're just going to repeat that for the rest of the row. So knit a second stitch and then you're going to go into this first stitch here like this and pull it over that second stitch and off knit one, go into the first stitch on your right hand needle, pull it over the second one and off, knit one, go into that first stitch, pull it over the second and off, and you're just going to repeat that, pulling every stitch over the second one. You want to make sure not to do this too tightly or you'll have a little bit of a bunched up end. So I'm just knitting normally, I'm not knitting any tighter. And when I pull the stitch over, it should be pretty easy. If it helps you, you can knit a little bit looser than normal so that your bind off isn't too tight if you're running into issues there. And we've gotten to our last stitch. So knit the last stitch, pull the second over the first, and off. So now you only have one stitch left, and you're just going to pull it out to create a bigger loop. Take your scissors, cut a long enough tail to seam. So mine's probably about three or four times the width of this, just to be safe. And then you just pull that yarn through the last stitch and pull it tight. And there you have it. This is what your bind off edge should look like. And mine isn't super tight, which is good. And now we can move on to seaming. So I have this piece here which I made specifically with seaming in mind. You can tell I've already woven in some of my ends. But this is the side that will be shown around the outside, so you're going to seam it together like that. So it will look just like this one. So I made this one with a first row of red and a last row of red to help really show you the stitches that you need to go into for seaming. So the red yarn here is just to help you guys out. So this is my right side row. So this is the side that's going to be on the outside and shown like this. And this is the wrong side. They look pretty much the same. It doesn't really matter which one you do. I just liked this one as my right side. And you can tell that my right side has the bind off edge here. So it should look nice and neat like this. And that is how I'm able to tell which is the right and which is the wrong. Because the wrong side of that is all bumpy, but the right side has these nice little V's. So you want to have your wrong side facing up. And again, this won't really matter because it's all garter. So you can just kind of choose which is your right and your wrong. If you want to do the same as me, you can have the right side being the one that you bound off on and the other side being the wrong side. All right, so we have our wrong side here, and you're just going to fold your ends over so that the right side is facing up. And then you're going to take the thread or your tail that you have left over attached to your bind off here, and you're going to thread it on a yarn needle. Okay, so once you have that threaded, I'm gonna show you which stitches you're going to be going in. So if you look at your cast on side and you pull the edge away, 
you should start to see some stitches here. So here's one right here. So every one of these colored bumps here, this, 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 that, corresponds to a stitch shown here with those two strands. And it creates kind of a V. So you've got the V here. And you're going to be going into each of them on either side of your end. So on this side, then over to this side, and back over to this side. So you're going to be going into them just like this. So you're going to be going in, I'm sorry, you're going to be going under the two bars that make up this V, and then you'll pull your yarn through. So that was just an example, don't start out that way. But you've got them lined up like this. And I have my cast on, or I'm sorry, my cast on edge over here and my bind off edge over here. If yours are reversed, don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter. So because my yarn is attached on the right side, I'm going to thread it through the corner of the other side. So you're not going into a stitch at the moment, you're just going into the corner. So if your yarn was attached on the left side, like one of these strands, you would just go over to the other side and go into the corner of it. Because you just want to get them initially attached. It doesn't really matter as much right now. So now, we're going to go to the other side, which is on the right over here. But if you are on the right already, you can go over to the left. It doesn't matter, this applies to both sides. So I'm going to go over to the right side, which is the one that I'm currently not attached to. Okay, so now that your corners are attached, you don't have to go into the edge stitches because that's what you just did by attaching the corners. So then I go over to the right, and I go into the first easily noticeable stitch that's not your edge stitch. So this right here would be my edge stitch. I'm going to go into the one next to it. So you find one of these loops. So this is the edge stitch here. This is the next one over. And you can see that loop. And you find the bars that are attached to that loop. So that would be this one and this one. So I go underneath both of them. And you can see that it creates kind of a V. Bring my needle under them and pull through. Then I go to the other side. This is my edge stitch. So I find the next one over, which is this bump here. And I find the two bars that are connected to it, which are these. Put my needle underneath them and pull the yarn through. Then I go to the other side. I find the next bump next to the one that I just used. So we just went into this one. So we move to the next one over, which is this. Find the two bars corresponding with it, which are these. Put your needle underneath both and pull through. Move to the other side and you're just going to repeat this back and forth. So I just went into this one. So this would be the next one. I go underneath the corresponding bars. Pull through. And you're starting to get your seam here. So I do this loosely and then I pull it tight at the end. So I just move to the other side again. So we just went into this one, so we move to the next one. You go under the two bars that are corresponding with it and pull through. Move back to the other side. Find the next stitch. We just went into this one, so now we're going into this one. Find the two bars that go with it. 
put the yarn through and just keep doing this. So just go back and forth until you have your seam fully done. All right, so I'm nearing the end here. I've got two more on this side. And you just finish off on your edge stitches. Alright, so I've got this seam here. It's definitely visible. So you just pull on your tail end. And because it's attached to your cast on edge, it will just bunch up like this. So then you just start pulling it back apart. Not completely, but it will just pull it to how it should be. And it should look like that. Obviously yours won't have the red bumps. Yours will look like this one. So there's a little bit of a seam. And on the inside you can notice a little bit of a bump but it's not super noticeable and it's the easiest one I could find. So here you have your cup cozy. You're just going to weave in your ends and you're all set.